communicating with a 12 year old daughter, that should be funny just to stop with me, a 44 year old dad. Because today's communication is a whole lot different than it was when I grew up. Because what do 12 year old daughters do today? Well, they text their dad. And the point is, is how do I text back to my daughter? Because let me give you an instance here. Here's a recent text that I just got from my daughter. It said, Hi, Dee. What? <laughs> what you kid? D and 2 M. A-I-S-I. I'm G-R-8. Oh, that must be great. Oh, I just got that. Okay. <laughs> Colon, parenthesis, I don't know, maybe that was a smiley face, I, I don't know. QL, at me. KK, PMB, G2R, CY, or CYA. Oh, I got that one too. <laughs> <laughs> of course, my response back to her was, what? <laughs> Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. Texting with a 12 year old. It's, it can be mind boggling just trying to figure out what they're trying to say to us. Because, of course, it went on. She responded back to me YCMU? LOL. Colon. Which, of course, I responded back to her, I love you too! <laughs> Which, what she responded back to me? Where'd he go? What? <laughs> <laughs> LOL, I love you! Which then she responded back, Ha 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 ha. But then it got me thinking, this texting thing, because it really shortens up everything, and we don't have to say all these different words, we don't have to figure out what YDYK means, or what all these, we could just, we could make our meetings a whole lot shorter, I mean, we always need extra time, correct? So what if we could implement this with our Toastmasters meeting? How great would that be? Because no longer would we talk about fellow Toastmasters, we would just say FTMs, and of course, when Janet's come to visit us, we would just go, HGs, our honored guests. And it's kind of like hugs, you know? It's kind of like special. You just kind of wrap your arms around it and feel all good about it. I mean, what wonderful. And then, of course, we get, we have to introduce all the offs. You know, the vice president of marketing, the membership and education, and the president. Because that's what we do. It, but then we would get into a lot of the different, different places and different positions. Because... Of course, we had our inspirational speech today, and we had our education, we can just call it the EDU speech. Or we can call it, we also had a wonderful BY, BYBO speech, Google your butt off speech that happened today. <laughs> and I mean, how, how great would that be? Of course, our grammarian would have to come up with the word, the word of the day. I mean, because that's very, very important for us. And of course, we always have to make sure and have our hot GYRC, of course, is the holder of the green, yellow, and red cards, our timer, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then the person that counts our filler words. That person might have a little confusion, though, because if we're, we're creating text, is that really a filler word? Or is it just something that they're expressing as a text to us? Because what would be um? I mean, it could be, you move me more. I mean, it could be confusing. Or the ah. Uh. I mean, uh, we always look at ah. Uh. Well, what if they're trying to say, always helpful? Yeah. <laughs> and of course, this is why I always use this stuff of word, because really this is what I'm saying. Instead of so, standing ovation. <laughs> of course, then the evaluations come up, and 
I think that we could really, really help our evaluators a lot by shortening that speech and just making it more succinct and clear. Because they're going to give their PDPs, their positive girl positives, right? And that is just going to help to enhance everything. So what would an evaluator's speech look like? It would look like this. In my opinion, love your very big smile. So, you're texting, it's not for me. It's a little over the top. But at the end of the day, great job.